Feels like a handful of silk now I'm in your warm embrace Oh, I hope this feeling lasts Hello and welcome back to MIG. Today I am going to be showing you how to make a cushion for your boat from start to finish and not because you need to watch my video to learn how to do it because honestly if you want to do that go to the Sailrite uh, YouTube channel and you can video uh, you can watch a video on anything basically regards to sewing for boats that's what I watched but the real reason you should watch this video is to show you that you can do it. I had no experience with a sewing machine, actually. Uh, well, eighth grade, which was a long time ago. And just using the Sailrite videos and, of course, the instruction manual for the sewing machine, I was able to create these cushions with uh, only minimal uh angst and the end result i will show you at the end of the video and it's fantastic and please like and subscribe i know you hear that on every youtube video but please do it i'm trying to get my subscriptions up to a thousand at least before i leave so that i can start monetizing things before i go and if you like these videos and you enjoy my kind of no-nonsense no frills video uh, making <laughs> or no skill, no skill video making. Uh, just the, the best way to, to, to help my channel uh, is to actually subscribe, tell your friends, get my subscriptions up and then watch the video from beginning to end. That also bumps me up in the uh, YouTube, YouTube algorithms a little bit. Uh, but if you don't like them, don't watch them but I would really like it if you did. I enjoy, I, I know that there are some of you that watch every video I send out and, and that means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. So without further ado, here we go. How to make a cushion for your boat. This is the mystery lady. <laughs> this is my lovely wife, Rebecca. Hi. Who is today my camera lady and she didn't really want to be on camera even though she's beautiful. So here I'm cutting the batting for this cushion that I'm going to be creating today. And it's pretty simple. You just get the batting material from Sailrite. You cut it to fit the shape of the cushion. Um, in this case, I'm putting it over the top of the cushion as well. And I actually put another piece within underneath it to give it a little more cushion at the top of this cushion um, because it's one that you put your arm up on when you're sitting at the nav station. So. It's the back, but it also is kind of an armrest. So this is the batting, and then you glue it down. So now I just undo this, fold it back, and fold this back, and we get to breathe the good stuff. That's good for the birds. And once again, I'm spraying nasty glue without any protection over my respiratory system. Yeah, it'll probably kill me young, but hey, it sure smells great. What I've found is you don't give any seam allowance because it, you want it to snug up. So for the top plate and the bottom plate, I don't give any seam allowance, but I do give a seam allowance for the uh, plaques around the side. So, so this is the top plate. When you're marking this, you just draw right up close to the cushion itself. Now we do the nice lines. 
Sailrite also has a calculator that you can calculate how much fabric you need and exactly where to cut it out of the fabric, which makes it a lot more economical when you purchase your fabric and it really helps you plan out what pieces you cut out first and, and all of that. Um, it's really a great service. And to cut it out, I use this. All right. So the hot knife is definitely the way to go cutting this stuff. No other way to do it with this umbrella upholstery fabric. Otherwise it will come undone. Although I did see a thing where they said that you could do that with a, by putting some upholstery glue on the spot along where you're gonna cut it and then you can cut it with scissors and the glue key. Then when I come to the corner, I just kind of put the thing in the corner real good. That way you don't waste any fabric, right? Right. So this hot knife is definitely the way to go to cut this upholstery fabric. Sailrite sells a complete hot knife kit, but this is just one I bought from Ace for a lot less money. So I would recommend that. Okay. That should be the bottom piece, but I put top so that this, this part goes up when I'm sewing it. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. And then with this stuff, you don't need the hot knife. You just need the Cutco shears. Seriously, if you don't have Cutco shears, you need to buy some if you have a boat. They are the best. And I was really worried when I first started doing this because I was afraid I was going to mess up the fabric. And it, because it's a cushion, it, it, it can be a little off and it doesn't matter, I found in the end. Like the corners, they just kind of take care of themselves. It's kind of bizarre. What I mean by that is they, they just take up a lot of your mistakes and you can't really see them in the corners at all. That's right. So there's your difference. It's not much. That's all the difference in the angle of those two sides. They're not very much. It's not even enough that like in sewing it, you have to do anything special, I don't think, other than the, the placking has to be the right size. But it should be easy with this one. Show my flat belly. All right, so I did not say fat belly, I said flat belly. All right, so uh, what you do here is you've got the batting in there, right? You don't want to take that much. You don't want to measure it from the top of the batting because you want it to be snug. So this is four inch foam. They say to do an uh, eighth of an inch uh, seam allowance on the plackings, I use a quarter of an inch because I have a hard time sewing a straight line. So that means I need an extra half inch. So I've got four and a half and then I also need to add on, I'm at four and a half now with the seam allowance, and then I need to add on the width of the zipper, which you're going to want to film this from up here, babe. So the width of the zipper is one and a quarter inches. So I'm at four and a half inches. So I'm at uh, five and three quarters inches for my zipper plaque. And to be honest with you, I just go six inches because if, if it is a little too big, I can either cut the extra off or I can take in a little extra. It's when I'm sewing. If you've got it too small once you've sewed up the zipper plaque there's nothing you can do about it you can't even remove the zipper without wrecking it so therefore i've got four and a half that's with the seam allowance plus the inch and a quarter is five and three quarters and then i add the extra quarter 
and I make it six inches. Yeah, so I'm just gonna measure this six inches down all the way across. I never purchased a uh, square that is for sewing and, and making templates and whatnot, and it really would have helped. At this point, I'm not gonna spend the extra 25 bucks because I'm almost finished, but if I could restart it, I would. Okay, there is the zipper wound cut out. So this is the zipper plaque. And what you have to do first is you, you just fold it in half and then you run the iron down that and flatten it out. Because that, where that seam is, that's where your zipper teeth are going to be, right in the center. Okay, so then the next thing we do is cut the zipper to the length that we want it to be. And this one is a big, the, the top part's bigger, so it's gonna have to slide in. It's gonna be difficult. So I want the zipper as big as I can get it on this. So I think I'll just give like an inch at the end there and on this one. And these ones you just cut them with the shears. What kind of shears again? Cut couple shears. <laughs> and then you go here, you're gonna wanna film from the top. <clears throat> And I want to see. I want the teeth right where, right where the fold is. So that means my seam that I'm going to sew is going to be right here. You'll see why in a minute. It's pretty cool. Okay. So now. I could just I could just set up the little magnetic thing and run it along there, but I have found that drawing the line helps me sew it straight, so I'm drawing the line. Okay, so I set up the magnetic guide here and I've got my little line which is kind of hard to see. I have the stitch centered and it's on the looser stitch because I'm gonna end up cutting out most of this. Um, they tell you not to, that you don't have to do a backup on this, but I do because the last time I didn't do that, it all came apart in the end. That is our bird. Okay. My biggest problem with this machine has been that it goes too fast. I, I can't, I have a hard time not speeding. That really has been my difficulty. Um, the, the speed of this machine, it's just so powerful and trying to control it. It's kind of like learning how to drive a car, you know, how you don't know how, quite how hard to push the pedal but uh, I'm figuring it out about the time I'm done with these cushions I will be really good with the machine and then the next time I need it I will forget completely how to use it and I'll have to restart and learn it again okay now you go along this and you cut the fabric in the middle with my Cutco shears. Okay, so we're not gonna film me cutting all the way down this. Okay. Okay, so I finished cutting that seam there that I sewed in for the zipper. And now, this makes it a hundred times easier. If you lay it out, and then run the iron over it. 
makes it so much easier to sew because now I'm going to have to sew the zipper onto this. And I will put my zipper on here. So I'm just gonna sew this on to this, just like that. I can't believe you've done them all without pinning. Well, you can get that tape stuff that yeah. they use at sale, right? Right. But it just gummed up the needle. I was like, oh, I didn't yeah. like it. So I've just been doing it without one. So. I made this mistake on the very first cushion I made and I almost made it again. And so I'm going to tell you what the mistake is because you, I don't want you to do it. Uh, had I sewed this up the way it is, when I flip it over, this is going to be the actual side of the cushion uh, that you'll see. And the zipper is going to be here and it's going to have a nice little opening right here where this seam is that I sewed together. So you have to make sure that the zipper teeth are up into this. This is the top of the zipper, not the bottom of the zipper. So when I pinned this on here, I pinned it backwards. See, I pinned it so that the top of the zipper is on the bottom. And I would have had to, to do that, I would have ended up having to re-sew this and ruin it basically, because this is too, you can't seam rip this very well or just have that zipper showing like my very first cushion, that's what I ended up doing. So that pretty zipper plaque ended up not working. So I just, all I have to do is just flip this over like this and then pin it again. So now we are back where we were just a minute ago. I'm gonna drop this down and then you want your needle over close to the zipper. So you put it on left, moves the needle over and then I can just sew along right keeping the foot of the zip foot right against the zipper as i sew and you got to hold these first or you can make a mess out of the thread and you do want to reverse here and then the other thing i'm going to do right now is I'm gonna actually sew across the back of this zipper here, and then I'll start up a little bit here. And the reason I'm doing that is that way I don't have to come back later and sew this end of the zipper up. I need to leave one end of the zipper up to put the zipper foot in. So you just lift this, turn that. You do not wanna start reversing with the needle in or you can bend the needle there we go and it's down now so i can lift this turn that and now i can just do my my long sew. okay here we go try and go slow Sewing the zipper plaque is probably the most difficult part of the entire cushion and once you get that figured out the rest of it goes pretty easily. So just keep trying until you get it. Again, I back it up. And this one, you can't sew across right now because we gotta put the, the foot in there, the little zipper slider, right? Yeah. All right, so now I can just turn this over and go back the other way and it's much easier going back because it's already, it's gonna hold itself in place except for that spot where the zipper's coming open a little bit.
Okay, so now I have to flip it over and I'm going to seam rip this initial uh, seam that we put in there. And I'm starting at the end that has uh, an open, the open teeth. And if you've done this right, uh, it should have a nice little opening for the zipper that looks really professional. So at this end, I don't go all the way. I just go to about right here, somewhere in here, because that gives you something you can then tuck the zipper into, you know. Okay, so now your zipper looks really nice, see? That's pretty great. Okay, I'm gonna put the end piece on here. There we go. So there is our finished zipper plaque. Well, okay, so this is the top piece. And so I'm gonna cut it out. It's four and a half inches which is what the zipper plaque ended up being perfectly four and a half inches. Okay. Angle from the foam, we just put the foam up, you know, where it's, where it's angled, and then we just drew a line and cut that. And now I take the side boxing on this side, and I've got to remember that right now, this is the inside, this is the inside. I put them together like this and sew my seam. Okay, so what I do here is when I'm sewing this seam, I want it as close over as I can so that I don't run out of my allowance, my seam allowance. So I set these up corner to corner, just like that. Lower my foot, move this over. I could do it in the center, but I think it'll take up a little extra, so I just go over just a little bit, and that way I can control it. And then I do want to reverse a little bit. So then you end up with this. And that takes that angle in. I'm gonna do exactly the same. A little reversing. This is where we're sewing the all the boxing together. Okay, so now our boxing should be finished. So now I'm sewing the boxing onto the top piece. And I have found that if you're not careful, you can pull one of the pieces of fabric a little harder than the other and it creates problems. Okay. Now, Sailrite, when they do this, they just go on to the next one, fold it around. I tried that and it's too hard when you mess something up. It's just easier for me to restart it and make sure that I got it going the right way. So, so I do this. So I made sure that I got the right boxing piece going the right direction and I just restart it. And I'm, it may bite me in the butt at some point, um, you know, because those, those corners may not be done as good as they could be.
Oh, there we go. Uh -huh. All of everything. Good, bad, everything. Hand me the scissors. So it didn't uh, even up at the end. But I think it's not going to matter. Other than the fact that the zipper is kind of fucked in there. I think, where did it slip? I don't know. Turn it off. Let's uh, put it over it. I guess we can't really. What's up? Did you go to the dentist already? Because we had it all matched up. It was because it was sliding. I think it'll be fine though. The foam, the foam covers a lot of errors, and it's in the corner. So I think if I, you don't need to film this. I think if I can. Get his teeth fixed. Why do people go to the dentist? I guess I, guess I didn't know he either. Can I hold it for you? You could hold this up. That will help, actually. Just don't pull it up. Just take the weight off. See how it slides? Yeah, the green stretches a little more than the... How badly I think it'll work. You want Jimmy down to do the silky stuff with you? Yeah, then? and you can film it. You can film me turning it right side out. Oh, hold on. Right, I'll be out. 
Okay, so I need to explain what I did here. I sandwiched in the piece that's gonna flap over in this seam, this top seam. It's the top back seam. So, it, and it's all, it's all pinned, so hopefully it'll work. When you're sewing this backing to the upholstery fabric, the upholstery fabric wants to stretch at a different rate from the backing. So you have to keep checking and you have to pull the backing fabric a little tighter in order to have a nice seam at the end. And that took me a few tries to get that right. But once you get it, then you realize that you can you can actually adjust that up to a quarter of an inch, maybe even a little more, by just stretching that backing as you sew. Um, that really helped a lot. I think that uh, had I known that at the beginning, I would have been done a lot sooner. I had to seam rip a whole cushion because I didn't know that and it didn't work out. And that was one of my beginning problems with this whole process. Okay, so we're gonna turn this right side out, just trimming off all of the excess thread. And we did have a little bit of a snafu at the corner, but I think it's gonna be fine. The foam, the foam covers a lot of the errors because it's so cushy. So we'll know in a few minutes. So you just have to unzip it. And then turn it right side out. Click all the corners out. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. And there's my flap. And it's on now. Okay, so what we learned about this when you order this uh, silk stuff from Sailrite is it opens up. We didn't know that, Jimmy well, we and spent I. What half an hour? This is Jimmy, by the way. I don't I, know if I introduced him on the. I don't think so. Yeah. So we'll just take it like this. So how many cushions did you do with it doubled over? We didn't actually. We, did. we, we, we figured we it out. Couldn't get it to seal. We couldn't get it to seal because we were like wrapping it around and stuff. Is where's the scissors? Yeah. So dad scissors. So I think if I oh Emily wanted me to show that to the to everyone on YouTube that their dad scissors. Yes. <laughs> Emily Ann and the boys got me these for. My birthday. Can you see it? Wow. it? Says dad scissors do not touch. So she actually wanted them to say something much worse than that. Yeah. They wouldn't print it. Well, they wouldn't print the other Where thing. we were last time we were trying to just figure out how to do wow. this with just it, this thick, but it opens up, doesn't it? Should. Yep. <laughs> see why you can hardly tell that it opens. It's magical. Does it stick to itself? No, not really. Not until you apply. It's very slick. When you apply the vacuum, it does. And then it works pretty good. This quarter is big. I think that we're getting it about as good as we're going to get it. I think we ought, ought to start putting that in. 
Be careful though. It's gonna be tight. That is not how it's supposed to go. But <laughs> It's a lot easier when it actually works. Just slide it right in. Yeah, I mean it worked though. Yeah. We're able to get the front of it in and then I was afraid to go pop the zipper. <laughs> Sewing skills on the zipper. Hold on. Yeah. Nice job, Dad. Yeah, it'll work. Okay, so we made these little buttons. Using these, just cover them with fabric, pop them together. It's really pretty simple. Now we're going to push them through here. And uh, you know, as far as these buttons go, it's just aesthetics. There's no real, there's no real reason for them. I just kind of like the looks of those buttons. Okay. go. I'll skewer myself. Don't do that. There we go. these right okay so I divide this up into the two separate ones which are the one with the loop and the one without right these are probably some antique thing from your great grandma huh probably they're kind of cool are they bone? No, they're plastic. And then start. Can't imagine that coming out now. Nope. Scissors. All right. So we'll turn it over and show them the other side. Don't turn it off yet. And then we can do two more. So there's the first one. And the other two are gonna go like, and there is the finished cushion. So now we're gonna run it out and we're gonna put it on the boat and uh, show you what we've got done so far. And then I'm going to bring in the other cushions uh, for tomorrow to do the buttons in. This is the finished product, my cushions that I have made myself. I'm very proud of the job I did. It's kind of crazy. I mean, they're not perfect, but I think they're pretty nice. I like them a lot. And... I'm as happy with these as I was when we had professional uh, cushions made professionally for Wandering Dolphin years ago. I think it's really a nice color for MIG. And the fabric is the Sunbrella upholstery fabric, which is very sturdy fabric. And I like the button idea. That was a, an idea I had to go ahead and put that in the back. And I think she's beautiful. There she is. Mig Norsi 27 cushions and a redesigned older 
boat where I increased the size of the salon settee and lowered down the nav station so that it is a table rather than a drafting table. And there we go. I have a very nice nav station here and a really great settee and salon area. One step closer to sailing away. The only cushions I have left, I still have to do this insert cushion. And then I also have uh, two long cushions in the aft cabin and then a medium sized one across the front of those. And then I have one little insert cushion for the, na uh, for the aft cabin as well. And then Mig's cushions will be completely finished. Like. Yeah.